hello welcome to today's video on how to solve center of mass problem so in this video I will take you through how to solve the center of mass problem in polar form okay if you haven't subscribed to my channel kindly subscribe for more videos all right so let's read the question together you're supposed to find the centroid of the uniform semicircular disk of radius R Wow this is a very interesting question okay so now what this whole thing means is that we should find our RCM okay and we know that RCM is equal to what our XCM from our previous video we said is XCM comma YCM okay now we said our XCM is actually equal to double integral of X times lambda dx dy this is what we generated in our first video so if you've not watched the video I'll leave the, I will leave the link of the video in the description okay so that you go and then watch that one later okay so that you understand this formula and so this whole thing over double integral of what lambda dx dy where uh, dx dy is equal to uh, da which is the area okay so how do you get your lambda how do you get your area okay now mind you from the question you are dealing with semicircular it means you are dealing with a circle okay but a circle doesn't have x and y components so what that we can do is that we just come to our Cartesian coordinates and draw our semicircle like that okay then our radius is what r so any point from the center to the circumference is what our radius so r like that then you try to find the s coordinates or s components in terms of the radius and the angle that the whole of this covers okay now for a circular object full circle the angle will be for zero to two pi okay but for um, semicircle it means that the total angle will range between this theta then less than equal to pi okay and our radius is ranging from zero sorry from 0 to r okay the radius is r so let me let me just maintain it like that so now with these with these let's try to resolve this our uh, x component here this is our y component into x and y okay now if i try to do that it means my x is equal to r cos theta okay this this is from pythagoras theorem okay on this side of the circle let me use the red pen for you to, to show you okay on this side okay so if I have I can extend this to here and just draw a right angle triangle there okay can you see that because the hypotenuse will rather be what R and then the opposite will be what Y the opposite here will be Y and this will be our X so if I resolve this into that so actually our X will be equal to R cos theta and our y will be what our y will be equal to r sine theta okay so now these are our new x and y so for this xcm here whenever you see x you put r cos theta there so the same thing applies to y ycm okay so now what about the x and our dy All right so let's find a, a way of writing our dx and our dy in terms of the theta and the r okay now from this two expression for r and x and y it means the x total in differential okay this is total differentiation from math method is equal to differentiating x with respect to r i'll get what cos theta the r now I differentiate it with respect to theta I get minus r sine theta the theta okay then my dy will be equal to sine theta the r plus r cos theta the theta okay so these two are my new the x and my dy okay so in mathematics calculus of um, wedge differential okay so if i have dy dx and i want to change it to dr the theta what i do is that i find the wedge 
calculus of dx wedge dy okay this will give me cos of theta dr minus r sine theta d theta then wedge sine of theta dr plus r cos theta d theta okay now from the wedge equation if i have it's like the whole of the first bracket wedge the second bracket so we will expand it like we do normal expansion but if i have the r wedge the r is zero so the first term of this bracket here when you wedge this we will get zero because the r the r is part of them okay then i come to the second part okay i come to the second part the same first term will wedge the second part and we'll get what r cos square theta dr wedge d theta okay can you, i hope you can see that now let me then all right let's take the second one as well the second one this side when you wedge the first term of this bracket we'll get what minus r sine square theta then d theta wedge dr okay now if it wedges the second term you have you have the theta here when the theta wedges the theta will get zero okay so it means that we'll be left with only this side the one we've got in here okay let me clean everything and write it again for you okay so now this will be equal to r cos square theta dr d theta now if you take the r wedge the theta to be positive and the theta wedge the r will be negative mind you this side is the theta wedge the r so we get minus the theta the r and that will affect this minus and we'll get plus so plus r sine squared theta the theta the r now this becomes now since the r the theta here is the same as this side okay since they are the same at both sides i can factor r the r the theta out from both terms and you get something like this will imply that the x dy is equal to r the r the theta out then cos squared theta plus sine squared theta cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is what one so we get r the r the theta okay so it means the x dy is actually equal to r dr d theta okay so let's clean everything and write it back so these are what we have here so we have x equals r cos theta y equals r sine theta then the s dy equals r dr d theta okay so now let's write our general equation again we said that xcm is actually be equal to what double integral of x lambda okay let me clean the lambda again i hope you remember this formula from our first video we did a first video on this so if you don't remember like i said just check up in the description below and then you'll find it out there okay then lambda dx dy this will work for every question okay this is that you are supposed to know how to convert your x and y's into the necessary coordinates okay so this means that lambda here here there's no lambda given okay so it means lambda is just a constant so i can pick my lambda out and it becomes out like that then x dx okay dy over lambda out like that double integral of dx dy okay so lambda can take lambda off and we'll be left with what double integral of x dx dy over double integral of dx dy now we've been able to simplify our scm to this level okay so let's try to find a double integral of dx dy the denominator now what is our dx dy it's r d r d theta okay now we know where or the range we know the range for our theta and our r so it becomes now i'm writing the theta's range for 0 to pi then 0 to r 
then r dr d theta so this is a double integral and this is very simple okay since they are multiplying i can separate them and get 0 to pi then the theta comes first then 0 to pi r then r dr okay so i integrate both terms okay so i integrate this side integrate the other side okay so i'll get here theta then from 0 to pi then times 1 over 2 r squared then from 0 to r okay the whole of this will give me and i put pi in theta i'll get pi okay but when i put zero in i'll get zero so i'll get pi times r squared okay when i put r in r squared i'll get r squared over two so this is for the denominator okay the x double integral the s dy is now actually equal to pi r squared over two i hope you get it now so that is our mass that is our total mass for this whole um, semicircular disk okay if you remember we said that this denominator here okay is equal to the mass if you remember from the first video all right so let's find the integral for the denominator for the xcm then we will know that you are done with the xcm then you go to the ycm okay so now this is our formula for our xcm now you are done with the denominator which is this side okay so let's go to the numerator which is double integral of x dx dy okay so what we'll do is that we'll put the s dy in and our rn cos theta and the rest okay so if i write the theta's range first is from zero to what pi then the r range is from zero to r then the integral is x is what r cos theta then the x the y is what r dr the theta now i guess something like i'm just grouping the theta's okay so integral of zero to pi cos theta d theta integral of zero to r r times r we get r squared dr okay so now when i do this integral I get integral of cos theta is sine theta okay and from zero to pi okay the integral of this is giving us one over three r cube from zero to r okay but if i put pi in sine pi is zero okay minus sine zero is also zero so the whole of this integral will give me zero so our xem is actually equal to zero over this okay which is pi r squared over two and this will give me what's zero so my xem is actually zero right for this question i hope you understood the xem okay so now let's go to the ycm okay So now we know that our ycm is equal to double integral of y dx dy okay because if i put a lambda in same thing we'll be able to factor lambda out and we'll get back this okay all right so you can try that on your own for this particular question okay lambda will be a constant in both the denominator hot and the denominator okay so we get something like this like we did for the scm okay so this is this will be the ycm for this particular question please take note because in some question your lambda will be given to you all right in an expression or something like that but this time it's a constant okay all right now let's consider we know the denominator which is simplified here for us okay that double integral the sdy is what pi r squared over two now what is our double integral y dx dy with that one let me write the theta the same ranges for the theta and the r okay just that this time the r coordinate okay r coordinate is what r sine theta from here okay i hope you you, you got it you resolve this into s cost r cost theta for the x axis and r sine theta for the y axis so here we get what r sine theta then the x dy is what r dr d theta now with the same thing since they are multiplying i can separate the integral and get something like integral from zero to pi then sine theta then integral sorry the theta should come okay let me write it again 
So we'll sign theta the theta, then integral from 0 to r, r squared dr. Okay. So this whole thing will give me when integrate sine theta, you get negative cos theta, okay? And from 0 to pi. Then you integrate r squared, you get 1 over 3 r squared, sorry, r cubed from 0 to r. Now this will give me, when I put negative, sorry, pi in this cos, there is a negative already, okay? So negative, then I put a bracket. Now cos pi is negative 1, cos 0 is 1, so negative 1 minus 1. There's a negative attached to it already, that is why I have the negative out. Then with the R part, I'll get the same R Q over 3 since it's only R that I, I can get a value from. Okay, so this will give me negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, then but there's a negative here, so you can go 2 R Q over 3. Okay, that is my numerator for what my YCM. Okay. So now our YCM is equal to this numerator that we calculated and got this okay over this side because the denominator is what we calculated here okay so let's clean that and write it all right so you know our YCM is equal to the numerator we had what 2r cube over 3 okay then divided by our denominator which is this side okay we did it when we are finding the x here and it's the same for both okay divided by r squared over 2 and in a principle of division this one will go this one will turn upside down the second one okay so we get 2 over pi r squared okay and now 2 multiply 2 okay and we get 4 then r squared will take one of the r squared in the r cube and get r over 3 pi so our YCM is that okay so then our RCM which is equal to XCM comma YCM this one our XCM is 0 but our YCM is what 4 pi sorry 4 R over 3 pi okay this is our RCM for this particular question so thank you and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you don't understand anything just comment on the comment section below and I'll apply to that okay all right see you next time